The Chronicle thanks our 2023 Meet the Candidates sponsors. Ann Colton Films, Flossmore Station Restaurant and Brewery, Jonathan Kane Salon and Spa, and Tom Brabeck Law Office. With their help, HF voters will be well informed on Election Day, April 4th. My name is George Lofton, George W. Lofton III, and I am running for a trustee in the village of Flossmoor. And uh, this will be my uh, second uh, tour. I uh, was appointed by uh, our former mayor, Braun, Paul Braun, in uh, November of 2020. And um, he asked me to come on board, which I did, and I ran in the 2021 election and won. And so I've been serving since, uh, since November of 2020, actually. And uh, I've enjoyed the opportunity. I've learned a lot in uh, a short period of time, and there was a lot to learn. Um, I uh, understand the uh, need for good oversight in a village uh, like Flossmoor because it has an enormously great reputation for fiscal responsibility and managing uh, the departments that serve our residents, for which I am one as well. So uh, for that reason, I want to continue the work that we are doing and what we have been doing, uh, and I look forward to the opportunity. My background happens to be in economic development. I spent 10 years of my 37-year career in the utility industry uh, as a, an executive in the economic development business, where we would actually bring businesses into northern Illinois, all over northern Illinois, because that's where we serve. The process involved uh, a team of people, including the state of Illinois, counties, and professional organizations that do business recruitment. And uh, since that time, here we are in Flossmoor uh, on the verge of a great opportunity because we have valuable uh, land parcels that we can attract business to. And uh, that is our goal, to actually uh, fill those 38 acres on Volmer Road and the sites that we have here on Flossmoor Road uh, with good commercial uh, business opportunities. We'd love to get some fine dining and entertainment in our area and provide our residents with the kinds of businesses that they travel elsewhere to do. We'd like to have that right here in, in Flossmoor. What we're doing is uh, we're bringing in uh, site selection uh, opportunities with businesses that do recruitment and uh, help us to engage with retail businesses um, and uh, with retail uh, organizations to find those that are interested and uh, would be uh, uh, interested in being in Flossmoor. So uh, it's an ongoing uh, avenue, on ongoing uh, work that can be done and uh, all of the board and the mayor uh, I stopped short of calling her an economic development mayor, but she's very much involved in this process and uh, I think we'll see more of that to come. A TIF basically uh, is an incentive to encourage and influence development. That's the basic uh, idea behind it. Uh, we, we use the TIF to uh, help entice businesses to expand and grow. Uh, and this is offered up to even our existing businesses. Uh, and uh, for years we, we learned that uh, the most jobs that we can actually produce will come from small businesses, some of them already existing. Uh, so it serves every opportunity for growth. Uh, and the, uh, the whole idea about taxing is that you uh, reserve taxes over a period of time uh, as a business owner and uh, the sales revenue that we get from that helps us to uh, offset the cost uh, to us as residents in, uh, in increasing taxes and that sort of thing. Uh, we want to uh, uh, grow with the tax incre increment financing and the downtown area uh, still has an opportunity for that, particularly the area that I spoke about uh, on Flossmoor Road where we have an enormous opportunity for good development uh, for retail as well as uh, as residential. Uh, well, we've had some flood issues, particularly in the downtown area here. Uh, we have engineering plans and uh, some work has already begun. And Berry Lane being a good example where our Public Works Department received an award for uh, the work that was done in that area. 
Uh, there is engineering that is ongoing to help with the flood issue uh, and the viaduct uh, uh, work to be done. Um, engineering is being performed in uh, the streets that are uh, connected to uh, Flossmoor Road and going, west, going east. Um, uh, there are projects already in place uh, for street resurfacing and sidewalk resurfacing. Much of that work got done this summer and that will continue. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to um, get grants um, from the Corps, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, and from the um, Department of Transportation in the state of Illinois, and there are a lot of opportunities for that to help offset some of the costs of these uh, enormously expensive projects. But it's ongoing. Uh, the plans are to, uh, to get it done. Uh, there will be a, a couple of years where uh, this work will be uh, undertaken and I think the end result our residents will really appreciate. First of all, let me say my heart goes out to the family of Madeline Mil Miller. Uh, I was uh, very much uh, disturbed by that, the fact that someone actually died and, and uh, you never want that. It's a horrible thing. But my prayers go out to the family. Uh, during the course of uh, the summer, since July 10th, uh, we've heard from a lot of protesters and that sort of thing. And I understand the, uh, the issue of white cops and black citizens. Uh, it's all over our country, uh, the issue. Um, uh, I don't think we have uh, that level of problem as far as Flossmoor is concerned, but it happened, and it is real. And uh, because of that, uh, our police department uh, is going through extensive training, um, and more than what the Illinois State uh, Police Chiefs are, are asking or requiring. Uh, they are in, uh, going through uh, de-escalation um, and uh, excessive force training. Uh, to hear our current acting chief, Taylor, say it, um, uh, training in the police department is a daily activity and that in itself will be a start to helping police officers particularly understand the culture uh, uh, that they're dealing with, the culture that is in our environment and uh, how, how to react to it, what to do. Uh, I don't know where the investigation is going to end up. It is in the state's attorney's hands right now. It has gone through the state police process and there is a three-step process that, uh, it's, uh, that is undertaken and right now the uh, state's attorney is involved in it. And we hope to have that soon. It's out of our hands right now. There's nothing we can do. Uh, but we want to make sure that we have the opportunity to make sure our officers, the men and women on our police force, are equipped with the equipment and training to deal with these kinds of issues without any problems. In addition to that, the state is uh, moving forward on its plan to create uh, a system similar to 911 that can be used uh, to provide mental health professionals on calls like that which Madeline Miller may have been involved in. And we hope that that will help municipalities like Flossmoor to engage in that kind of activity moving forward. Those are the kinds of things that we know can happen and we expect and hope that they happen soon. The uh, pickup truck issue occurred before um, me coming on to the board. And uh, I saw how it, uh, it went and, and you know how it came about. Um, it, it seems to uh, have settled in. I'm not sure if everybody's really happy with it, but it's, it's there now. Um, I was engaged in the above ground pool uh, uh, situation and my initial thought, uh, I'll be honest, I, I was kind of on the fence and uh, uh, I understood one side saying that it is a right to use your property uh, as you please, it is yours, um, but then we had so many comments from the other side that we didn't think that it would uh, blend in with the uh, integrity uh, of the neighborhoods and, and environment. And there were as many people against it as there were for it. And so uh, uh, I personally was kind of stuck on that, you know. I didn't know which way to go. So 
um, the, the, the uh, situation ended where we uh, simply uh, did not allow above ground pools at this time. I don't know where it's going to go beyond that. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I like to swim. I enjoy uh, swimming and all. Um, I understand some of the argument uh, with regard to uh, the integrity of the pools and that sort of thing. I've seen some very nice above ground pool settings that uh, quite frankly are, are quite attractive, but they're expensive. Um, an in-ground pool, I have one, they're very expensive also. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure uh, where, where that will go in the future, but for now, uh, it essentially got voted down because uh, there was one side that didn't want it and, and one side that did. The, the process was fair because it allowed for a lot of input from both sides, as I said. Um, and there was a number of discussions and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, I, I don't know what would be different at, at this point should it come up again, except that there may be uh, a different feeling uh, about the issue uh, from the board level. There may be and there may not be, but the process uh, would be the same that we would have on any issue that would affect, affect all of our residents and we try to treat it as fairly as possible. In going around, especially during the campaign, but as, also as a trustee, I get a lot of questions uh, about uh, the board and how we perform and that sort of thing. The Board of Trustees is a, uh, a team member, if you will. Uh, we are fortunate to have a uh, administration and staff in our village that is second to none. Um, and the uh, fire department, police department, the administration, uh, and our award-winning um, public works department, uh, they're simply the best. Our, our responsibility is oversight and to help uh, manage through, through the plans that uh, these organizations make. Uh, they make the job easy, quite frankly, uh, and they do a good job in, in uh, managing their budgets, um, forecasting and projecting projects and um, we we have uh, a financial department that is very astute it has uh, managed a very good rating for the village over a number of years and, and so you know I like to tell people about that and, and why Flossmoor is as functional and good a, as it is and how we've been able to deliver services and um, and keep us safe at the same time. So uh, th that's kind of what uh, I, I see as one of the issues that uh, needs to be talked about a little bit more. Uh, I'm kind of excited about economic development, quite frankly, because uh, I see great opportunities. Um, I see what's going on around us in terms of uh, uh, growth in other areas that will generate opportunities for business. So uh, I expect in the next four or five years that Flossmore will have uh, kind of a new cover, if you will, that will uh, uh, address some of the needs that we've heard from constituents and, and everybody talks about. Uh, we love our restaurants and that sort of thing, and I personally do. I think they're great. Um, but uh, we can use a few more. We can use a few more. Uh, we certainly can use some shops and, and things of that nature. Uh, I personally would like to see the 38 acres on Volmer Road filled up. I really would. I think it would be great for the town and, um, and really enhance our community and, and certainly in the long run kind of uh, lessen the burden on our taxes. So that, that's important.